people watching you and more people watching you. Our people don't take orders from anybody but their heart and their guts. And our people, people that love freedom, don't even have a cell structure you can penetrate. What are you going to do? Go off their internet searching histories? What, you're going to find out there's 100 million people? You can't stop us. You can't buffalo us. You can't bluff us. We understand that there's no quarter. We understand you want to destroy us. We get it. And now you've acted so brazenly, you've just confirmed it to fence sitters. And they're choosing sides right now. And all I'm telling those fence sitters is this. There's never too late to be honorable. It's never too late to join your ancestors who may have been honorable. It's never too late to pull out until you're dead. Pull out now. Commit to being honorable now. Don't go along with the tyranny. Stand up for what's right. I skipped the network break. Uh, just please support GCNlive.com. Please support our local affiliates. Please pray for this transmission and please spread the word about this broadcast. And please visit InfoWarsLive.com where we've got the great sleep aid, uh, natural herbs back in, knockout, brain forces back in, super male vitality. And we're selling uh, four weeks supplies of food and others, the lowest prices ever at InfoWarsSelect.com, the lowest price that my Patriot Supply has ever offered at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com. That's how we fund this operation. We'll be back. The globalists are moving on every front across the planet to cut off resources to any group or organization or people they don't control. They are openly bringing in their planetary world government on the ashes of sovereign nations and individuals. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're now into the second hour of Worldwide Broadcast. Coming up in the next segment, we have the barbershop owner in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who was fined for not cutting a woman's hair. And how that ties into all this other important social engineering news, Joseph Farah, the Western Journalism Center and World Net Daily joins us with key information on the Clintons and more. And then Pastor Chuck Baldwin joins us on the fall of the church and how it was taken over in America. This is key information. It's all coming up today in the next two hours. If you just joined us, it is 14 years later, 9-11, 2015. And I just played the former deputy head of the CIA and the former head of defense intelligence openly saying that they were ordered to basically back al-Qaeda. They were ordered to fix intelligence to cover up ISIS. And now it's all coming out. To then turn them loose to commit incredible crimes all over the Middle East. And then the West would encourage with freebies that we won't ship you back if you come to Europe. And so it went from a few hundred people a day to a few thousand a day to tens of thousands a day to hundreds of thousands a week. And now they're saying we must accept them. And the word is it may be millions a month now, just giant mass floods as the crisis to bring down Europe. I mean, it's so diabolical. And the same thing's been done saying, oh, we're just taking children in America. And the, the, and, and the government buses them into Democratic Party offices and gives them voting cards and driver's license and welfare and anchor baby. And, oh, and adults, too. Only 17% are under 18. Actually, it's adults. And then two-thirds, two out of three Hispanics oppose immigration increase in New Gallup poll. Despite all the propaganda saying it's racist to not have open borders. Hispanics aren't stupid. But what are you going to do with the giant groups of people from all over the world showing up? Latin America was the majority. It's not now. It's just the whole world. Asia, the Middle East, the poorest areas of Africa. I go into some areas of Austin now, and it looks worse than third world countries I've been in, with just people just squatting under trees. The ones that haven't gotten recycled in the Democratic Party yet. People fishing with beer cans and lines from you know Guatemala down in the creek with fires going. I mean, it's just like, we're going to look like Brazil. I want to build up Brazil. I want to build up Mexico. I want to have them be first world. But this is to make us third world. Have you been to some areas of L.A. now? It's scary. 
and the decision's been made to turn us into a third world country. I thought folks might want to know that. And are we safe for 14 years after 9-11? No. Al-Qaeda's been given Stinger missiles and all these weapons. They've changed their name. They're taking over. They're being supported by our government. Top generals have gone public. No one gets in trouble. And Homeland Security is busy through their Democratic Party front people in Travis County and other counties around the country, not just in Texas, going after Republican and Libertarian-style governors that are fighting the New World Order. But there's a political purge and takedown. You know, that's what Hitler did at first, the first six, seven years in, in Germany before he really went hardcore. He would just have people set you up for political stuff, for petty crimes, and then they put you in jail for that. And then, oh, you die in jail. <laughs> oh, boy, I'd like then come pick up your uh, disabled child and say, oh, they just stopped breathing last night. <laughs> oh, boy. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. We're also back weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. Then I will return live this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with a Sunday worldwide broadcast as well. We're going to be broadcasting for 28 hours. We've added an hour. Coming up starting next Wednesday into next Thursday. Uh, so that special 28-hour broadcast launching the radio and TV shows onto television satellite uh, will be happening next week. We have a, several documentaries made for TV. We're going to be premiering here. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of special guests. It's really going to be an amazing 28-hour live broadcast with about 22 hours of it being live. Uh, another six hours or so are going to be documentaries, premieres, special reports, uh, you name it. You will not want to miss uh, what's coming up uh, next Wednesday and Thursday. Find details at Infowars.com forward slash show. Now, on Monday, I saw a story in the Associated Press and also in local news. Barbershop fined $750 for refusing to cut a woman's hair. And it described the lady coming in, and they said, look, we're, we're a men's barbershop, just like there are women's salons, just like there is curves uh, for women's only uh, fitness gyms that my good buddy founded and owns. The CEO has been on the broadcast. It's just crazy. And one guest we had likened it to if you owned a Dodge car going into a Mercedes dealership and saying, I want you to work on my American car. And they go, we work on German cars. Or going into a Japanese car place. I mean, they've got the equipment. They've got the parts. They've got the mechanics. They know how to work on a Japanese car. It'd be like going into a Italian Ferrari uh, repair shop and telling him to work on your Ford pickup. The, it's not discriminatory. That's what they do. It'd be like showing up to NASCAR and saying, I want to see a circus. They look at you and say, we, we, we race cars. We don't have lions and tigers and bears, oh my. But this is where political correctness has gone and people laugh at it as kooky. No, he got fined $750 for gender discrimination. I personally, in my life, go to barber shops since I was a little kid. You go in, you wait five, 10 minutes, your dad gets his haircut, you get your haircut, you're in, you're out. A lot of these men's barber shops have Playboys laying around uh, or they have beer. Uh, I don't know about this gentleman's barber shop, but I know that's a trend where you got women's shops and you got men's shops. Uh, or, or, or maybe there's pinup girls on the walls and, and, and beer. Or, or video games. I don't know about his barbershop. I'm just guessing. But now there's articles out. Feminists claim it's sexist to compliment women. A lawyer sent a woman a message saying he thought she was, quote, stunning in her LinkedIn photo. She went public, attacked him. Other feminist groups shamed him, saying, you don't talk to women. See, they're God. You don't even talk to them. Lawyer who accused Barrister of sexism has described men online as hot and trolled for men. So, see, it, it, it's about a power thing. That's in the London Telegraph today. Most women are great. Most men are great. Are there some men out there that are arrogant pigs? Sure. Are there women out there that are crazy? Absolutely. But with the modern feminist movement, it's about power. 
And we see Christians getting locked up for not, you know, giving out marriage licenses. Uh, we see all sorts of persecution if somebody won't bake a certain cake. I mean, am I going to go to some black fraternal organization and demand I be allowed in? I mean, or how about a Masonic order? They have them for men and women. Can I go join Women of the Eastern Star, a Masonic female organization? Look at this. San Francisco jails to house transgender inmates based on gender preference. And then they had national debates about this the last few days. Our guest, Johnny Interval, now has the website barberstandsup.com. He's going to go on Fox News today, but he wanted to come on first here because he's a listener. We're honored to have him. Uh, Johnny, thank you for coming on. Uh, my Barbier, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, is the name of your barber shop. I'm told it's an upscale men's only facility. Uh, they have men's only gyms, too. I mean, I guess those are hateful. This is crazy. Uh, describe to us what exactly happened and where all this is going now. Uh, well, where it's going and what happened. Uh, a few months ago, about four months ago exactly, a young lady came in to get a haircut here in our barbershop. And um, she was declined service um, because she's a woman and we have an all-male clientele here. Uh, at that point... He well, became very irate. We tried to comfort her, offering uh, another place for her to go. Um, we've had women come in in the past and uh, want to get haircuts. And, um, you know, they've had, they've had no problem with it. It's just, you know, sometimes you get someone who's a little more aggressive, and that's what happens. Uh, you know, we offered to pay for a haircut at the other place. She wasn't having that, and I really never gave it another thought. And then uh, a few weeks later, uh, or months later, rather, uh, I got a letter that said I was fined seven hundred fifty dollars, and I could either accept that payment and admit my guilt, to which you know, obviously, I don't think I'm guilty of anything, and or fight it uh, and face up to ten thousand dollars in fines and stand to lose my shop. So, after kicking it around a lot, um, I've decided. The, I th I, maybe you can tell me something different. I think my best course of action is to pay the fine and then appeal that uh, I was uh, afraid that maybe once I said, you know, yeah, I'm guilty by paying the fine, then they could file lawsuits for discrimination after the fact, you know, like they're just waiting. Well, for you should talk to a lawyer about your particular state laws, but but in general, this is outrageous. Yeah. Uh, they have Curves, the biggest fitness chain in the world. You made that point to me off there. It's a great mm -hmm. parallel that's for women only. Uh, they have golf courses that are for women only, tennis courts that are for women only. I think that's totally normal. Sometimes women want to get away from men. They don't want to have to dress up. Uh, that makes sense. Sometimes men want to go be part of a men's club and not sure. be around women so you can tell jokes and do whatever you want. I mean, it, it's just common sense. They're waging war against this. Uh, it's bizarre. Uh, and so uh, if I was you personally, describe it for me. Was it a state or local agency? I, I know you're in Washington, PA, right outside uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, I mean, describe exactly what agency did this. Well, to describe it exactly, a gentleman came down from Pittsburgh. I assume he was from the state. Uh, he came in and uh, sort of, you know, strong armed us into talking. I, I told him I'm a very honest person. You know, I told him exactly what happened, same as I'm telling you right now. And my statement is really what got me in trouble, saying that, yeah, I did turn her down based on gender. So, according to the law, I, you know, I did break it, but, you know, according to the law of. You know, but that law is unconstitutional. I think so. Well, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you're allowed to have a barber shop for men, just like they can have salons for women. I would think so, but yeah, it's a state law to answer. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, and that's when I called their lawyer to ask, you know, what should I do to this fact? You know, what can I do? They, uh, he said he couldn't tell me. You know, I called the state, and he said it's a conflict of interest. I can't give you any information. I said, how can I prevent this in the future? Can I put a disclaimer on my website? And he would just read me over and over the four-sentence umbrella law, you know, you can't discriminate against, you know, any race, sex, religion, and that's it. I mean, and this is bottom line, black and white. So, you know, this appeal, I think, is going to be an uphill battle. Well, I'll tell you the answer is for, I don't want to give curves any trouble, but, because uh, they're patriots, but I would, I would find some women-only gym, and I think you should go on the news camera and say, I'm here to go in the women's locker room, and I'm here, and you got to let me work out. And just right. see how they like it, because this is this is about terrorizing men. Uh, yeah. Now, tell me about your place. I see a guy drinking beer back there. I I'm told yeah. it's a place. I mean, it's really just kind of like a bar where guys can hang around and shoot the, you know it really what. Is, man. I, I can give you the grand tour if you like. Yeah, um, let's do it. 
Yeah, you want to do it? Um, you know, basically, it's the this is, this is the place. This is uh, Max. He's got a good gentleman right now. He's enjoying a frosty beverage. <laughs> uh, we 